Welcome back to our channel where we focus on the basic steps you should take to improve your health and reverse your biological age. We hope you have watched the first 10 videos in this series where we have looked at the all-important nature's rules that you must follow, if you are serious about turning back your biological age. Here is a quick reminder. Nature's rule number one tells you to get up from the sofa and start moving. Exercise every day for the rest of your life. Nature's rule number two tells you to eat real food, don't eat crap. Respect your blood sugar. Take the A1C test once a year. Become insulin sensitive again, don't be insulin resistant. And the fifth rule. Get enough quality sleep. Nature's sixth rule tells you to protect your telomeres, so you must avoid chronic stress. The seventh rule tells you to relax your body and clear your mind. Whilst the eighth rule tells you to socialize with people, so don't be alone, you should belong to a tribe. Nature's ninth rule tells you to follow the guidelines if you drink alcohol. Whilst nature's tenth and last basic rule tells you to stop smoking, so if you smoke, please stop today. Now, let us assume that you follow nature's rules, and you feel great, and your doctor is really happy with your results. Your tests are better than ever. In fact, your doctor tells you that you have reversed your biological age. So all is well until the unthinkable happens. During the next 60 seconds, we will not disturb you, we just want you to imagine that you are the patient being rushed into the hospital. During these 60 seconds, ask yourself if you are covered for such a terrible ordeal. By now you have guessed that this video is focused on your need for a proper health insurance plan. Whatever the status of your health today, and whatever biological age you have achieved after following nature's rules, you still need to have a proper backup in case the unthinkable should happen to you. If you live in a country where a national health service provides you with whatever care you might need, you are lucky and probably don't need to watch this video till its end. However, if you live in a country where there is no free nationwide health service you should stay with us to learn more about the need or proper health insurance. This is especially true if you are a retired expat who lives in a country where you are not covered unless you sign up with a private insurance company. If this is the case for you, please stay with us for a few more minutes. And, if you happen to be a retired expat living in Thailand, watching this entire video might turn out to be very important to you. But first, a few words about the importance of health insurance in general. Health insurance is not cheap, and it can be tempting to go without coverage, especially if you never get sick. With the expensive monthly cost and out-of-pocket expenses, you may be wondering how much you really need coverage. Many people may feel they are healthy enough to skip out on health insurance. When you rarely see a doctor, and especially if things are tight financially, it may seem like a good idea to cut the health insurance expense completely from your budget. You can pay for medical expenses as you go instead of worrying about the insurance premiums. However, this could be very difficult if you have a serious illness, an accident, or an ongoing health issue because the costs can become very large, very quickly. This is why it's essential for everyone to always have some form of health insurance. Medical emergencies are very expensive. If you have the misfortune of undergoing a medical emergency without insurance, it is easy to find yourself with a crippling amount of medical debt, and seemingly no way out of the mess. If you take good, preventative care of your health, it's hard to see why you'd really need insurance. However, missing that last stare at home and dislocating an ankle, 
or having an accident on the ski slope and breaking an arm could cause an injury that costs you thousands of dollars in medical bills, and it can quickly climb higher if you need surgery or any kind of ongoing rehabilitation. Emergency surgeries such as an appendectomy can be very expensive as well. And also I want to mention here too, because of the overwhelming amount of people contacting you, I would like to also mention to people maybe have a little more patience than normal for you to get back in touch because you are you are, are in overwhelm at this point. Well, at one stage, uh, the lookups on our Facebook, sorry, on our website uh, increased from its daily 250 to 300 by 500%. 500 percent more it caused us a lot of great trouble. problems. Yeah, sure. So what, JC, what I would like to let people think about who are looking at insurance in Thailand, because you're moving into an older age group, consider taking an annual deductible on a policy. That way, you lower the premium, even if you start trying to save the deductible. But my belief is that you can borrow a deductible from a friend or a family member, but you can't borrow the amount of the premium. That's like right. a five million, you can't get that. No. So may, in your home country, you may not uh, understand deductibles, you may not be used to deductibles, uh, but you have to give it some thought. It's a deductible is self-insurance. Well, oh, I have I have a, a thousand, uh, the equivalent of a thousand U.S. dollar deductible. I, mean, I want to say it's what forty thousand, know, something like that. And I mean, it substantially reduced the premium cost for me, and and was well worth. It. And of course, you all now have discounted. I've had it a couple of years now, and you all have discounted also because I haven't filed any claims. So there is ways to to lower the premiums. I'm just hoping that they'll be able to. Take the, the my hope is is that people are going to be able to get the kind of coverage I have and also be able to use that to comply yeah, to this requirement. On, on Tom's note, I think it's important to say as well. You know, there is a lot of people in this country that don't have any insurance, and they said, you know, some of them have got their self-insuring, they've got money in the bank, and that's great. There's also a segment that's saying, you know, I'm an Englishman, right? I've, the amount of English people that I've spoke to that said, well, if I'm sick, I'll just fly home. People don't remember, you have to be medically fit to fly. If you've, got, if you've got anything serious and that doctor can't let you on that plane, what happens then? So at the very minimum, everybody should have some kind of insurance policy sat behind them. And if, and if, it's, if it's about premium, there's ways that we can lower the premium to make mm. it affordable. And with the product suite we've got, you know, it's, it's not, we've got low, mid and high end insurance. You're but, probably a good person to ask too as well, when, as far as being able to fly back, don't they have to return back into their home country, into England, for a certain amount of times before they get back in the Q4 help? Well, that's very true. With the NHS, you know, people, uh, I don't quote me on this, but my understanding is once you've left the country for three months, you're no longer eligible for treatment in the, in, under the NHS. That said, you know, the, the hospitals in England won't turn you away. They'll treat you first and yeah, do I think you do have to reestablish yourself there for a specific mm -hmm. amount of time, if I'm not mistaken, and don't hold me to that sure. either. But, Tracy, yeah. what, what I'd like people to remember is that while the doctor can say you're medically fit to fly, mm. the chief purser on the aeroplane decides whether he's going to let you on or not. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've had instances where people have had a stroke, they want to go home, to the UK, two people want to go home. However, they were incontinent. And yeah. as a result of yeah. that, the purser would not accept them on an aeroplane. Yeah. Now those people stayed in Thailand as it was for an excess of three months, and one of them had to stay in hospital. And I can tell you the, the expense, in fact both of them stayed in the hospital, but one, one of them, uh, the expense was uh, just over seven million baht. So and if even if they had enough coverage to stabilize themselves to be able to get back, but again, it's going to be up to the discretion of the per chief purse or the plane whether right. they're going to let them on or not. But just even if they said, "Well, you can't fly as you are, but you know we can stabilize you. We need to, and then you can go home if you want to stay there and get coverage." But at least they got to have coverage to get to that point, just, right? Just understand if if you if you don't have coverage and you're not in a position to get home. 
be prepared that either you're going to you know, fall by the wayside or you're going to go into a hospital and let, you know, going to the doctors for the flu, yes, Thailand's quite cheap in that respect. Mm. Make no mistake, if you go to a private hospital and you're admitted over a length of time, that, you know, the, the bills can get out of hand. And it could be, you've seen Tom's seen people that told him they'd get a policy and they didn't, they've ended up having to, you know, sell a house or, yeah. you know, it's, 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 and it can get And we've got bloggers now, and one blogger in particular that said, oh, I'll get health insurance coverage next year, and he was diagnosed with cancer one year before he was going to pick up coverage, and now he's faced with these bills. And so, I mean, all these are issues that need to be considered when people are, are thinking about insurance, and rightfully so, because now for me, I have a, a thousand, about a thousand dollar deductible. I'm married to a Thai person. I'm completely happy if it's a minor situation. I fall off the motorbike or something, and I'm not, you know, in serious injury of going to a public hospital where it's very inexpensive and I pay out of my pocket. I have you all's coverage for either an issue that I need diagnosed properly, which I would feel more comfortable in a private hospital doing with their expertise, as opposed to a public hospital, or if I do have a serious illness and I need serious treatment, then I need to opt into the private hospital, and that's when y'all's coverage is going to be a lifesaver. Literally, no <laughs> pun intended. You know. But the funny thing is, JC, you know, your plan covers you up to 10 million baht, mm -hmm. and that's not an aggregate total. That's 10 million baht per condition per year. Per year. You're very well protected. Now, some people don't have the the you know the capacity to get a plan that covers them up to that much. There is people over here that are retiring cheap. So they might have a plan that will cover them up to 1 million or 3 or 5 million baht. Then you have to be very particular about which places you're using for treatment. So if, for example, if you've got a plan that covers you up to 1 million baht and you did get cancer, yes, we will all... Here's another point. Because we've fully underwritten, we will pay every single claim that's valid. You know, whatever, whatever people would like to say online, as long as, you've not as long as you've declared everything correctly and been truthful on your application, we will honour every single claim that comes out. Furthermore, we won't kick you off at a certain age. We'll renew you through, through the lifetime. But if you are on, on a plan that's got a lower level coverage, you know, be careful about which hospitals you're going to. You know, Tom's seen cases before where people have gone in with cancer, they've gone straight to Bumengrad. It's one of it's a great, great hospital, but it's one of the more expensive ones. Absolutely. So we're also here to assist. You'll, you'll burn through the coverage Very a lot quickly. quicker. That's a good point. But we're here to help. I never even thought of that. Right. So, you know, we're here to advise people. So, you know, if somebody's gone into this hospital, Tom's done how many cases where he's called the client and said, I'd advise you to get out of that bed you if you're mobile. You're burn through your coverage in no time. Go down and to and another and treatment provider. Point. Because, and I never thought about that because, I mean, my coverage, you've, You're in, fine. in my handbook, I mean, I can go to basically any name hospital here and have my coverage accepted. And so, but I never thought about as you increase the standard of the hospital or if they are a medical tourist hospital, which are known for being higher costs, those costs are going to burn through your coverage a lot quicker. That's a very valid point. And can I just tie, tie that back into the deductible thing that Tom said, is that, you know, although we've got this big, you know, range of products, you'd be so much more better off uh, to get a higher level plan that gives you that peace of mind and do the necessary steps to bring the premium down, whether it's a mm. higher deductible, mm. whether it's the outpatient removal. You know, I can sell a premier plan that costs X, right? But I can also sell a Maxima or a Maxima Plus plan, do some mechanisms to bring down the premium that would and have been the same, the same exactly. premium cost. So, uh, you, know, if, you know, this is always comes down to budget. People mm -hmm. usually here are buying on budget. Come to us, speak to us, tell us your requirements, tell us your budget, explain to us your conditions. You know, but again, we, we try and be as transparent on our offer letters before anybody's made a decision or taken the policy out. Most other companies, very easy application, very easy to pay, but they know nothing about you. And it's only when you're sick that they will investigate the condition. Mm -hmm. And that is why when you think you're covered for something, and in mm -hmm. fact you're not because they didn't know you were on blood pressure tablets or whatever, oh, the insurance company it, doesn't want to pay. They, then they don't, file, they don't pay the claim because it was pre-existing even though you didn't, they know it's pre-existing. Mm -hmm. You know, what people have to understand is that when you think you're going to die, you tell the doctor 110% of the truth. <laughs> when you discover that you're not 
dying, mm. the truth is diluted. Mm. So that's when an insurance company finds out because they get the medical records in, read it and say, ah, you've had this treatment before. Mm -hmm. And I say to people, be honest. Don't say, I forgot. I mean, most people know whether they've had a mini stroke, they've, be, they've had an MRI in a hospital before, they've had a back problem, whatever, they know it. Tell the insurance company right at the start. Yeah, be honest up front. Because they, they don't want any unexpected surprises where all right. of a sudden they have a bill that they have to pay because you all find out that they had pre existing conditions right. that they didn't disclose it to you. It just wastes a whole lot of time for the insurance company having to check on it. It's easy to say, just pay the bill. Mm -hmm. But you pay the bill for genuine claims. You don't pay the bill for claims that uh, are not genuine. Yeah. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and close it. I just do want to uh, say thank you so much for taking okay. the time to sit thank down you. with me and answer these questions because <clears throat> my members are always, I'm fielding questions. And I don't, I'm not an insurance company. I have no knowledge like you all have. I do have knowledge about the visa end of it and all that. But when it comes to coverages and all this and, and what you're being told by the government and by these you know, regulate, regulating agencies, I didn't have a clue and I thought, okay, we need to make some clarifications here for the YouTube viewers and, and put all this out there. And if they have any other questions that they can contact you. But this is like, <clears throat> there seems to be people in, in the YouTube community that don't believe anything anybody says. <laughs> And they might not even believe you. I mean, these people are just, you know, it, it's, it's funny at this point. But the people that are serious and concerned about this issue, now they've got some real information. I think that's really valuable. So I want to thank you all. We're always a call or an email away, as I said. You know, the the, the underwriting is so important. Thank you so much. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's been informative. And if you have any other questions, I'm going to put a link in the description to where you can contact Jamie directly and uh, he'll field questions. Again, have a little patience. They are in ov overwhelm at this point. But hopefully, if, there, if and contact me too. If any clarification comes out or any changes, please let me know and I'll pass it on or we'll come back in and sit down again and if, and if there's a clear cut distinction that we need to know I about. think, because obviously, you're just on, on the last point, in the coming months, we'll also be taking on some uh, um, other professionals that can speak multiple languages, German, Italian, cool. French, Japanese. So we're there to help, you know, okay, and good. we're there to be as, 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 a, as, as helpful as possible. Despite what these people will say online, we're not here to just sell a plan for the sake of it. We're trying to do the right thing for the right good. reason. All right? Good. Well, thanks again. And uh, even when it comes to complying with insurance regulations nowadays, there's always an option. And uh, Again, they even mentioned make sure to do your homework and find out what you're going to need to comply to and then reach out into the different companies. Pacific Cross is one of the ones that have been approved, but reach out to them and see what, so what they offer and as far as the service. And uh, But I, I definitely say check out the Pacific Cross. I think it's one of the best companies out there. Thank you, and that's why I have insurance with you all. So thanks again for your time. Cheers. And uh, we'll be in touch. And there you go. Hope it's been helpful. And see ya.
Welcome to Dan About Thailand. I have a special guest on today's show to help discuss and clarify some of the confusion that's still out there with regards to the mandatory health insurance among retirees in Thailand. So today, it's not so much my Dan About Thailand hat I'll be wearing, but my hat as Managing Director of Thai Visa. As I still see on the forum from many of the posters, that there's confusion with regards to what the situation is and I hope we can clarify and confirm this all today. Today I'm joined by Jamie Connell, the Client Relationship Director at Pacific Cross Health Insurance who underwrite and manage Thai Visa Protect on our website which offers tailored solutions for health insurance for retirees and other expats living in Thailand. So, so Jamie, thanks for coming today, of course. Um, I want to talk about health insurance in general for expats in Thailand, sure. but I know it's being debated a lot at the moment. There's a lot of retirees that still aren't sure about this mandatory health insurance, so perhaps you can clear that up. Well, clearing up would be a difficult challenge um, right at this juncture because there's still a lot of conjecture out there about who this pertains to. Um, so the backdrop is basically back in May of a late April or May of this, uh, this year, Dan, the government, along with the Thai General Insurance Association, basically made it a mandatory requirement to have health insurance in Thailand for retirees. However, they didn't do an exceptional job of explaining exactly who this insurance was aimed at. And it's only for people on a very particular visa. It's a non-OA visa or a non-OX visa, typically known as long-stay visas. So when this was first announced in May, we were getting an influx of inquiries for people on every type of <laughs> visa you could imagine. Retirement, non-OA yearly extensions, marriage visas, even people with work permits. So the first point is, this only applies to long-stay visa holders, non-OX or non-OA visas. Okay, and not extension of stay on your current retirement? Well, that's a, another good point because again, this has been re-announced a couple of weeks ago due to be effective from the 31st of October or next week. Our interpretation is that if you're a new applicant for a non-OA visa or a non-OX visa, you have to have mandatory insurance of which Thai Visa Protect Pacific Cross um, is one of 13 approved companies. There's conflicting information. Um, we understand that if you extend, have an extension of stay on the runaway, you do require the mandatory insurance. Though there's people on, online or coming out of other provinces saying they were told by their immigration that it only applies for new applicants of runaway. So at this moment, we're not visa experts, we're not the TGIA, but our understanding is it does apply to extensions of stay also. Mm. Um, but I, I believe as the the wheel turns after 30, 31st of October, more and more become apparent about who this actually specifically applies to and when. So the confusion doesn't just sit with the expats, but with the insurers too. How have other insurance companies interpreted this and responded to it? So, as I said, there's, there's for the non-OA uh, visas, there's 13 companies that have been approved. Um, some of the companies are quite local Thai companies. Um, which we feel might be quite hard to, to field very particular questions from retirees here, whichever nationality you are. Some of the companies, we know, we've, we've looked around on the market to see where we stand, um, and it's been a challenge with some of the companies to even get any kind of response, let alone an informed response. So I, don't, I can't really speak on how other insurance companies are approaching it, but we've seen some instances where they may be not approaching it as as, uh, as best they can. Hmm. And the terms that, the mandatory terms for health insurance for people that are applying for their retirement visa for the first time, is it good enough cover? What's your views of it? Well, okay, to, to, to give you my information of, of how it was played out, back in May when they first introduced, I, I believe or I understand this, this whole premise to get the insurance derived from the fact that there was a lot of unpaid bills um, people not paying their hospital bills. The t people believe online, and I can't say I disagree to some extent, that it was for people coming in on tourists and visas, and, or sorry, for holidays, without insurance, running up a, a bill somewhere for a motorbike accident and getting out of there. So I agree somewhat with people online that are saying, well, this is, should be aimed at the, the tourists, not the residents here. You know, I, I, I'd agree with that somewhat. Though I do believe it's important to have insurance. Now the issue was, that back in May, when they first introduced this, 
the requirement was to have 400,000 bahts worth of inpatient cover and 40,000 bahts worth of outpatient cover. And it was only a very particular plan that was approved that met those requirements that could tick the box to get you the visa. But it didn't make much sense, certainly to us and obviously to the, the, uh, the people out there, that somebody that may have already had an existing plan that covered them up to a million dollars even, couldn't tick the box to get the visa, but the, the 400,000 baht one could. So that firstly didn't, was quite nonsensical. Um, so at that stage, we, we, we worked with the TGIA to say, look, you know, why wouldn't a plan that exceeds the requirement be suffice to obtain a visa? And that's at the juncture we're at now. If you're asking me, do I believe that 400,000 baht's worth of cover is sufficient in the event of something serious? Uh, absolutely not. So I don't really have much interest to sell anybody a policy that covers them up to 400,000 baht. That said, there will be people here, if you've got lots of money in the bank, you're gonna be fine, right? And we, everybody knows that outpatient cover or trips to the GP are relatively inexpensive here. But the misconception is, is that, you know, Thailand's cheap for care. Now, if you have anything serious, that means you're admitted into a private hospital over a, you know, a length of stay, the cost can escalate quite quickly. Mm. And another misinterpretation that we see time and time again, often on, on the Thai visa forums, is that if I'm really sick, I'll just go back to my, my country. You know, if, as an Englishman, very proud we have the NHS. You know, one wishes that the NHS was a worldwide institution, but it's yeah. not, it's the world we live in. So people have the misinterpretation that if they're sick, they'll just go back home. Bear in mind, once you've been out of the UK for a certain amount of time, you're ineligible for NHS cover, I believe six months, I'm not sure. Mm. Secondly, you've got to be fit to fly. So if you've had a road accident, you've got an aneurysm on your brain, nobody's going to sign you off to get on a plane to go home. Obviously, that's a big one, isn't it? And it's a complete oversight. If you are that sick and you need to go back, chances are you can't travel or the airline won't let you on the flight anyway. Yeah, you know, with insurance, Dan, you know, People that who, who have it say it's a complete waste of money because more often than not, they don't need to use it. So for them, it's dead money. But transversely, the people that don't have insurance, of which there's been bloggers out there, everybody's seen, that develop a condition, suddenly realize why having adequate cover would have been a good idea. And that's the, you know, I've worked as a broker before. I've worked for a number of different insurance companies. The benefit of the Thai Visa Protect products is there's a huge range of products. So, you know, people are misinformed if they think that they're a certain age and it's, it's unaffordable. We've got products that range from a few hundred thousand bahts cover per condition per year, right through to 50 million bahts worth of cover per condition per year. And there's also ways to lower the premium by applying excesses or deductibles. Some people just want the outpatient cover removed, they just want to be covered for inpatient. What I'd advise people to do is to do their own research, survey the market accordingly. If you've got questions, get in contact. We're there to, to assist you. We've mm. said we've got numerous product offerings. Yeah, tyvisaprotect.com. Um, okay, let, let's move away from retirees because we have we kind of gone to where I wanted to go as well. When when expats are choosing their insurance, yeah, what kind of things should they be aware of? Great question. So, you know, first of all. People look at insurance as, or insurance companies in the same bracket, okay? The first thing I look at is, how are you underwritten? Okay, this is crucial. So 90% of insurers out there use a form of underwriting called moratorium underwriting. So it's a very easy, you know, non-stressful application process. Um, you get issued your card, and we've all done it. You walk around with the card in your pocket and I'm covered. But the insurance company has never asked you anything about them, okay? And what a moratorium policy is saying is that anything that you've had in the last usually two, sometimes up to five years, will not be covered until you've gone with coverage two or five years, symptom or treatment free, you know? So that, that doesn't work for a lot of people that may have a condition such as hypertension, high, high cholesterol, hyperlipidemia or cardiac issues you will never be a moratorium because it's ongoing. Mm. So this is why you have the disdain online where people say, well, the insurance company tried to wriggle out of paying. No, they didn't understand the terms of the insurance and how it was underwritten. 
and the insurance company only looked at you when you were making a claim and reverse engineered whether it was subject to cover. So where Tyvisa Protect products differ is that we fully underwrite. So we recognize we've got a much more difficult application. It's about five pages long. We will ask you anything and everything to do with your medical history. And it's really important that you declare everything fact factually, truthfully. Once we've underwritten you, we come back with an offer letter that says exactly where you're co what you're covered for, what if anything has a wait period. If you've got something you've had before, we might say, look, we want to have a wait period before that's covered. Or we might outright exclude something. But the point is, before you've made a decision to obtain or purchase the insurance, you knew where you stand and there's no hidden surprises down the line. So I can't speak for everyone, but I can say that Thai Visa Protect, Pacific Cross, will pay 100% of valid claims 100% of the time. As long as you haven't mis put a mistruth or, or forgotten something on your application. And believe me, it happens. People will try and hide. They've had this before. And when you see medical records, it tells a different story. So it's always important for people to, to factually declare on their application. Once you're covered with us, we'll take new applications up to 75 years of age. Other companies will kick you off at a certain age and we'll renew you through your lifetime. Furthermore, the benefits of the policy are reset every year. Mm -hmm. So unlike some companies I've seen, if you've suffered a condition in year one, the insurance company would pay it. But when you came to renew the policy, they'd exclude that condition, which kind of defeats the purpose of insurance. So in summary, to answer your question, what that should you look out for? How the policy is underwritten is the first thing. What age are you, are you covered up until? How are the renewals calculated? Now these are for retirees here. So most companies will typically have, they will look at a global or a nationwide pool of customers and each year the premiums will go up um, typically five to uh, up to 15% every year, okay? We, don't, we look at the client individually. So if you've gone treatment free or claims free for a year, we've got no claims discounts. If you've had moderate claims, let's say your premium is 50,000 baht and you've claimed 30,000, 20,000, whatever, we will hold rates the next year. If you've had a high claim, which can happen, then we have the, we reserve the right to load the premium at the renewal to a maximum of 25%. So you're not exposed that we can just jack the rate up to kick you off. The maximum is 25%. And if in the following year, you, you don't have a, 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 you know, any recurrent treatment for that condition, we can possibly remove that loading at the next renewal. So, personally, you know, I'd rather have an increase on my premium as a, uh, when I've had a high claim than just routine increases. Mm. My, own, my own personal customers, some of which may be watching, uh, I had 27 renewal notices to send out in August. Um, 26 were either held rates or had no claims discounts. One person had an increase. You know, so what age is an important thing? Does the insurance run through? The underwriting terms? And how, how's this premium going to look in one, two, three, four, five, six years? Okay. Okay, yeah, very interesting. I've got a couple more questions before, before we wrap up. The first one, I was thinking about those that come over and they've got a company group insurance. Yeah. And you know, there must be some things to consider there in terms of is the premium good enough? And what happens if that company group insurance finishes and you're left with preconditions that then index when you go to get your own insurance? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So under group schemes, and again, there'll be, this might be a bit of a uh, diatribe about this, but under group schemes, a lot of company schemes are not portable. And we've seen this before. So you might have been a guy who's working in Thailand for the past 15 years. You're really happy with your insurance. When you come to retire or move companies, you can't always take that insurance with you, which leaves you in a bad predicament, okay, if you've developed any conditions that no insurer will be willing to take on ongoing. So there's, there's a couple of options. One is that also there's a lot of company op policies out there that have very low coverage, okay? Look, before I was in insurance, if I had a card in my pocket, I thought I'm covered, but I've never really read anything about up to what. So there's two things I'd ask people to consider. One is to look at getting a supplementary insurance or bolt-on insurance. So if you've got a plan, low-level cover with your company, there's a lot of them out there, we can use that policy as a deductible against our policy. 
So for example, on her historic product suites, if somebody takes a 300,000 baht deductible, $10,000, we discount the premium 50%. We take out the outpatient cover because they just want to be covered inpatient, that's another 20%. So somebody who's got a low level company plan could purchase one of our policies, we use that plan as the deductible, and suddenly you're only paying 20, 30% of our base premium, but you go to bed at night knowing you're covered up to three or five or 10 or 20 million baht, not 300,000. So that's one option I look at. The second thing is, is that people should look at getting a policy sat in the background. So be underwritten now, while you're still healthy, while you're still with the company. So that if you ask your HR and the HR says you can't take this policy with you, you're not going to walk into trouble later on where you, you can't get coverage because now you've been working your, your backside off. Now you've got hypertension and everything else. Mm -hmm. So company stuff is, is, is that. We'd invite anybody who's got any insurance. This isn't pertaining to non-OA or non-OX holders. If you've got, here's another really interesting point. With, a lo with us, you know, you're, we're a licensed provider. So if there is a disputed claim, it, you have the protection of the, the ombudsman here. Okay, that, that you can't say that about companies that are offshore. Where's the jurisdiction for them? So as I've said, as long as somebody's been upfront on their application and there's no conflicting medical records, we'll pay every single claim that comes in. We process tens of thousands of claims each year. So for the people that believe that insurance companies pick and choose which claims to pay, if you don't pay a valid claim, you could lose the whole business. So you have the protection of that. It's good. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this now online that are from different nationalities and okay you can get the gist of it but when it comes to some of the finer details it's probably better to speak in their native tongue what what nationalities can you service yeah so basically at the moment we've got the ability to service people native english speakers obviously native thai speakers we also have a french speaking national who can deal with french people a german speaking national who can deal with germans an Italian for Italians and a Russian for Russian. So we're, we're probably the best place provider to deal with multiple languages across the board. Okay, that's great. Um, so before we wrap up, is there any, any other things you want to cover? Yeah, just, just back to the OA stuff. So, you know, if, if somebody's applying from overseas and they're, they, uh, to, to obtain the visa, if for whatever reason they weren't able to obtain the visa, they can cancel the policy and we'll reimburse the premium. So that's an important factor to take on board. Um, also, if you've got an existing plan with Thai Visa Protect and when you took the policy that you elected to remove the outpatient cover, but now you've got this visa that needs the outpatient cover, we can include back in the outpatient cover for just the minimum requirement, 40,000 baht to meet, uh, to tick that box, should I say, for an additional 10,000 in premium. Now again, a lot of other companies out there, and we, we will invite people to do their own research. A lot of companies, when you want to add in outpatient cover, it often doubles the annual premium that you're paying. So all I'd do is, look, contact us at uh, contact at thaivisaprotect.com. Uh, we'll assign a representative to help you. The worst case scenario is that, you know, where you are, that you're good there, it's, it, it can uh, meet the needs uh, of, your, of your requirements. However, we might be able to increase your coverage. We might be able to lower your premium. But at the very least, we'll be able to explain the policies in full we're not here to try and sell the most expensive policy. You tell us what your requirements are and then we lead you accordingly. But the, the key point is the transparency on the policy before you take the coverage. So you don't have any surprises further down the line. Jamie, thanks very much. Really enjoyed that, so much learning. And I guess we just need to keep an eye out to make sure we've got a finger on the pulse with any changes that are out there. Uh, if you do want to find out any more about health insurance and packages right for you, check out thaivisaprotect.com and see how that can help you. Until next time, on Done About Thailand.
Has the new mandatory health insurance regulations put a wrinkle in your retirement future in Thailand? If it has, you want to watch this because I got some new news for you. My viewers, a family here. Hi. From watching YouTube. Hello. Hi. A YouTube viewer, right? Definitely. Uh -huh. I'm a subscriber to this channel. And you have a family here, but you live in San Diego, right? San Diego, California. Do you think it's a good place that you want to retire to in the future? No, definitely not. It's so expensive. Oh, All San Diego. What about Thailand? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm here for. Yeah? Try All right. Look for a place to stay, hopefully. Well, and I'm going to post this up on YouTube. Great. All Thank right. you. And it's nice to meet you. Take care. And absolutely. Okay? All right. All right. Think Watch about it. it. Retire in Thailand. Absolutely. Retire cheap. Yes, sir. Back Asia. See ya. See ya. So, I want to talk to you today about this mandatory medical insurance. I got some good news for you. But before I go into the news, I need to give you a little bit of a backstory and some caveats. Okay? What I'm about to tell you hasn't been formally announced. So first off, I need to tell you that. But I've gotten this information from very reliable sources and it should be going into effect in the very near future. Now having said that, a little bit of a backstory. For those that don't know, if you want to get an O-A visa, which is a visa for the purpose of retirement, in your home country, it used to be the easiest way to go. And you could get that by, you didn't have to have money coming into a Thai bank, you didn't have to have money in a Thai bank. You would just show that you had the funds to fulfill the requirement of the finances, either as income coming in in your home country or in an account, an investment account, anything, you'd be good to go. Lately, they said people that are coming from abroad are getting medical treatment and leaving the hospital and going home and never paying for it. So they said, if you're going to come over on this OA visa, we want you to have mandatory health insurance. When they made this announcement, I'll tell you what, this is what the deal was. They say, okay, you're going to have to have a minimal coverage, which is very small. It's like 40,000, 400,000 coverage, inpatient, outpatient. So they said that. Then they said it's got to be done. The only people who can issue this insurance policy are eight companies, eight Thai insurance companies. Okay? Now, keep in mind that you're getting your OA from your home country. You're not even in Thailand yet. Okay. A wrinkle. Then they also said it's only specific policies that are going to be written for this coverage. Okay. Those were all the challenges, and people were up in the arms screaming, and oh my God, what, Thailand doesn't want foreigners anymore, blah, blah, you know the story. If you participate in any forum, or you read the YouTube comments, you'll know that people have a lot to say about this. And rightfully so, there's a lot of holes in this. And so I wanted to get some firsthand information, so I traveled to Bangkok and talked to my insurance agent. I have Pacific Cross Insurance, a great insurance company, and I wanted to sit down and, and say, hey, come on, give me the scoop. What's up with this? And so we sat down and for, I don't know, about an hour, and I might, I'm not sure, I might edit some of that conversation and put it at the end of this video. So if you want to stick around and watch some of those important distinctions that they made and challenges for them. 
they had challenges with this whole thing because there was too many what ifs, what ifs. And so, like I said, I went to Bangkok, sat down with them, got some great information about this mandatory requirement. And they were one of the eight companies that were allowed to issue the policy. So that's what the deal is. People who have gotten their OA so far back in their home country haven't had to comply. But I was looking at this going, well, wait a minute, you, you, these insurance policies are from companies that are in Thailand. These people aren't even in Thailand. What happens if they have pre-existing illnesses? What happens if they're over a certain age? There's just too many things that just didn't make sense about this. Also, and you'll see if you stick around for the end, Pacific Cross was saying people contacted them, and I'll put a link to my agent in the description, but people contacted them and said, we want policy to cover us for this insurance regulation to get the OA visa. This 40,000, 400,000 coverage, which is minimal, that policy, specific policy for that, to cover for that, was as much as I pay for 10 million bot coverage for one year. And so I asked them, Jamie and the managing director, Tom, great guy, at Pacific Cross, what's up with that? How come it's so expensive? And he says, well, because this is a specific policy that like my 10 million baht policy is in a pool with people of all ages. So there's the cost versus the payout that create the premiums. And so they were explaining that the people that fall within this category, this specific policy are over 50 years old, they're higher risk. And so that pool is very small, more higher risk, so of course the premiums are higher. All this was made a lot of sense to me, but I kept saying none of this makes sense of why they're gonna require this, that there's going to be people who can't comply. Okay, there's the backstory for you. So you're probably at this point going, I haven't heard any good news yet. Okay, again, I've got this from very reliable sources, but the caveat is it hasn't been announced and I'm not going to tell you who the source is because they've asked me not to tell them in case there is some kind of change between now and the time this is announced. But the good news for you all, if you're thinking about getting the OA visa in your home country, as opposed to a retirement extension within Thailand, a couple things to keep in mind. When you go to get your OA in your home country, it's a one-year visa, but you, you can get almost two years out of it. And I have information how to do that in the member site that I, I don't want to be too vocal about it because there's a lot of times there's some kind of go around or loopholes or stuff and they get closed up because people talk too much about them. But anyway, this was the deal. You could get almost two years out of that. But when it's done, if you're in Thailand, you can't renew it. And even if you're in your home country and it expires, you can't renew an OA. You have to start the process over if you're in your home country and apply again. If you're within Thailand, that visa, the OA, becomes void, and what you end up doing is getting a non-immigrant visa. If you go into the immigration office, show you comply to the requirements, which is now 800000 either in the bank for a certain period of time or that you're having income coming in over the period of time that equals the 800000 about 64000 baht uh, a month, something like that. If you comply to all that, then what they do is they issue you a non-immigrant visa, 90-day visa, and then you come back in about 80 days or so and they throw on a one-year extension on top of it for the purpose of retirement. So there is no renewal of an OA. I just got to get that out of the way. Okay, so the new regulations, if you're going to apply for your OA visa in your home country, you're going to be able to use any policy that you already have in place that meets the minimum amount of coverage. It doesn't have to be from a Thailand company, okay? So this is the deal. You'll be able to use existing insurance. Also, if you don't have insurance, you can reach out to a company like Pacific Cross and you can ask them to issue you a policy. And you could have a policy like mine, which I only pay like $126 a month for a quarter million dollars worth of coverage per incident per year. So that would also comply. And if you're thinking, well, I'm not in Thailand yet, 
a company like Pacific Cross, and I can't say this about all the other companies, but they can actually issue you a policy with a tie address because you should have a tie address and then once you get over here then you switch it over to your tie address so they could issue you a policy and have you could have major medical coverage before you even got here i think you have to get back into thailand within six months or something of you taking out the policy though but anyway they'll issue you a policy you'd be able to get your oa visa come to thailand switch the address and you're good to go so the big distinctions here are that you can use any insurance even if you have insurance already and you can use any policy that covers at least the minimum of what they require which is almost every policy keep in mind when you hear about renewals there is no renewal if you wanted to switch from say OA and you're in Thailand you want to get what's called OX which is a five-year visa plus a five-year extension there's a lot of requirements for that. I personally am asked a lot from my members about this, OX. I don't suggest getting it because you have to keep a lot of money in the bank. There's a lot of requirements to it, and I'll put all the requirements down. I don't need to talk to you all about it if you're not interested. But there's a lot of requirements that it's easier just to go get a one-year extension on a non-immigrant, which takes me about, I don't know, about 40 minutes a year to go in and do. I mean, it's a piece of cake, and it's cheap where you don't have to have millions of bot in the bank and all this other stuff so anyway this is the new gonna be the new regulations from what I've heard and it should be announced because it's supposed to go into effect sometime in August so to recap before you had to have a specific Thai company issue you your major medical and it had to be a specific policy now with these new regulations that are gonna be announced hopefully you're going to be able to use any insurance policy that you have, even a pre-existing one that you have, as long as it meets the coverage. Now, once you get over to Thailand, if you wanted to, you could switch over to a policy over here. But to get that initial OA, you could use your policy back home. So this is really an upside to this because, I mean, some people, it was a big issue. Yeah, and it was an issue for the insurance company as well. It's an issue for everybody. And so it appears that the Thai authorities have taken this into account. Insurance companies have given them feedback and they've listened, which is a great thing. So I hope this is helpful to you. I'm going to go ahead and leave some information below. And I'll also probably edit onto this some of the conversation I had with the Pacific Cross representatives. And once this goes into effect, if it does, which I'm almost 100% sure it will, then I'm going to reach out to my agent, Jamie, and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one conversation and record it for you. And if you have any questions, just email me at retirecheap at gmail.com or use the link, how can I help, that's in the description. And just give me the questions, and when I reach out to Jamie and we do a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, we'll do a Q&A and answer any questions you might have if I can't answer them personally so again when it comes to conforming to requirements in Thailand there's always an option and some people say Thailand's authorities don't have any flexibility well this appears that they have listened and they have been flexible so if you like what we're doing make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe and See you in the next video. Check out what's after this. See ya. So, JC here, and today's a special day because we're going to get some information, and we're going to get it with credibility concerning the regulation that they've come out with about mandatory health insurance for retirees living in Thailand. And I made a video about this before, and that was that it actually applies to people applying in their home country for OA visas. It doesn't apply to people that are coming to get an extension in Thailand. But a lot of things get thrown around, a lot of information, but also a lot of questions. And I have questions as well, because I don't understand how somebody with pre-existing conditions are gonna be covered when they get up in age, how they're going to get coverage. Well, I'm at Pacific Cross, and we've got Tom Thompson, which is the managing director, and my buddy here, Jamie Connell, who's uh, my agent. 
and uh, handles most of the policies for foreigners because he speaks such great English. I don't know why, but anyway. But we want to talk to them about some of this, and I let them know I was coming to answer some of these questions. And so they've come up with some, some brief points that they want to make, but I think it's really, really important to get some information. But keep in mind, no matter what they say, it's as of today. And like anything with Thailand, it, it can change in a moment's notice. But as we sit right now, there's some points that they want to make that I think are really relevant and should be passed on to the public. And so I wanted to sit with you all and and mention my questions, but you might already have those covered anyway. So I would like you all just to speak for a few minutes about what you know up to this point about this regulation, how Pacific Cross is handling this on your end, and any other kinds of things that you want, any points you want to make. So the floor is yours. Have at it. <laughs> well, uh, I'll, thank you very much, JC. Um, for Pacific Cross, we registered our name as an approved insurer for, this, for the uh, visas. Uh, we've already designed three plans for the visas and got approval for those. And that's for the OX visa. Mm -hmm. We understand that the same plans will be approved for the OA visa. But right now, we have nothing in writing to confirm that. Mm. And for those who don't know what OX is... The OX is a 10-year uh, or a 5 by 5, five, by visa. five visa. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and there are special requirements for that. The long, the OA is called the Long Stay Visa, which is a 12-month visa. Mm -hmm. um, we've already, in the process of submitting some additional plans to get approved mm. uh, to the regulator. Right now, we have to wait because the regulator has to examine them and provide the necessary approval. Okay, so the OX, but the, the, the policy coverages that are mandatory are very low. So anybody that actually wanted real insurance, good coverage, that really doesn't help them that much, right? Is that correct? If, if you don't mind me answering this one, so you know, since this announcement happened, um, you know, at the beginning of May, it, what they didn't do a great job in explaining exactly who this requirement, this mandated insurance, um, applied to. So as a result, you know, we didn't see this coming, and we'd have thousands and thousands of inquiries coming in from people on marriage visas, non-O yearly extensions, and the list goes on. So. You know, what I think this is a, a really good opportunity and um, platform is to explain, you know, first of all, because a lot of your guys are retirees, mm -hmm. this doesn't apply to every retiree. It's only a very particular type of visa. Um, now, in terms of the coverage, um, you know, it's, it's not a great amount that they're, they're mandating. So we believe that, you know, we, we've been one of the six companies that's approved to sell the plan, but in terms of actually what kind of insurance it is, it doesn't really serve much purpose. You know, 400,000 baht, JC, is not much more than a broken leg, a couple of kidney stones, you know, let alone anything serious. And, the, you know, the trouble that I've had um, explaining to people is that, you know, if you are on a non-OA visa or a non-OX visa and your renewal is, is in, imminent, um, so I'm not a public speaker, so sorry if I'm a bit shy, <laughs> um, then, unfortunately, you are required to get this particular insurance. But if, for example, your renewal uh, for the visa doesn't apply until later on in the year, I have no interest in selling somebody a plan for that coverage. We hope that the government will eventually allow any um, plan that meets or exceeds that requirement to be suffice to obtain the visa. But as of now, that's not the case. As of now, that's not the case, um, which makes it quite difficult for us when we've got these historic product suites that have really good coverage and they're around the same pricing. Yeah. Um, that's something and, to and, mention. And, are not, well, are not and the reason why the pricing is similar, because people are going to say, well, you're just gouging these people because it's opportunistic, but that's not the case. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, uh, you know, this is a group of people at age 50 upwards. In fact, mm. the average age is around the 63 to less than 76, say 63 to 73. So it's quite a... Uh, a targeted group of people getting these visas 
as a consequence, the actuary looks at those, they're a higher risk. But the, I'm paying, I'm 62, 63 years old, I don't know how old I am. <laughs> but anyway, um, and, and I have, I don't know, five or 10 million coverage, and I'm paying almost the same thing that somebody's going to for 400,000. How does that work out? When the actuary looks at that, how do they compare? Why? Be bear in mind that you're in a pool of people. You've been underwritten, that's one thing. You're in a pool of people from a child of 15 days through to a group up to our eldest policyholder, I think he's 81. Well, so you're in a pool of thousands of people. Uh... So. Whereas now we're creating another pool that's only higher risk, only 50, I get it. 50 years yeah. of age and mm. upwards. So this is a specific pool of people, high risk. Mm. So as a consequence, okay. the, the actuary do, t uh, does the calculations and that's the reason for the okay, risk. Okay, that makes sense then. And every insurance company's mm. got the same issue. Yeah, yeah. And just so there's clarification about this, because there's some people that aren't you're probably becoming a visa expert because of this situation. But for those that don't know, most people that apply or in Thailand come here with some kind of visa, then they convert it over to a non-immigrant visa, which is a 90-day visa, and then on top of that is a one-year extension put onto that for the purpose of retirement, which is completely different. And at this point in time, this kind of insurance is not applicable to those types of people that are doing that. The regulation specifically at this point says this is for OA visa applicants and OA you get in your home country. And there's been word to say that once they renew it, they're not gonna need it once they're living here. It's only the initial application, which makes, again, there's a lot of these things, points of this that makes no sense at all. And so I just wanted to mention that, and there should be, and you all are waiting for clarification on a lot of these issues. So what are some of the other issues about this, that your distinctions that you made from people contacting you with their situation and what they want to, to get, as well as what you're hearing from the immigration or from the health department, or whoever you're trying to deal with the regulators for this? So, just, I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of different opinions on this. You, you could speak to one immigration person who says this is happening, and we hear another story on, on the back end. The, the, the trouble that I have is that you know, a lot of guys are getting in touch, JC, that may be over 75. You know, we're one of the very few companies that can actually insure someone up to 75 through to 99 years of age. There's a lot of insurers in this, in this country that would kick people off at a certain age. Mm -hmm. You might have people over here that I've spoken to that have got, you know, so many, a wealth of pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. in, in some cases, we can't even offer cover. So Even with this new coverage? I mean, yeah, we fully underwrite. So the, the problem that um, these people will have is they, they may have a number of different conditions that, are, that standing alone, we'd be able to cover them with an exclusion or with a loading or with a wait period. But there will be people out there that, you know, retired here that are either over the 75 age group and we're not, we don't know where they're going to get cover. The other problem that we have is that, you know, even what we're one of the six companies that's been approved, you know, a lot of the other approved companies, you can't even get through to speak to anyone that can give you any answers. So at this juncture, as of today, we are one of the companies that's approved to sell this very particular type of plan. Um, and all people need to do is provide an application, we'll fully underwrite and then make an offer accordingly. But because we fully underwrite, it will mean that the transparency is on the coverage before they decide That's whether great. to take the policy. I have a question. Okay, this is a hypothetical situation. If somebody's 70 years old, some pre-existing conditions, they need this coverage to get their OA visa. Mm. Are they going to have to have a health checkup in their home country for you to put the coverage? So, How would that work? Yeah. Well, we'll accept a health check from an overseas uh, medical provider. You There's will. no problem with okay. that. Uh, yes, we'd accept that. So now, or, or a current, you know, one we'll take them up to three, four months old. It's not okay. Big, you know. And then, okay, so seventy, they get pre-existing conditions. So there are going to be exclusions from coverage for pre-existing. Is there going to be any issue with 
with that? I mean, is is the government, as far as you know, is the government just saying, show us a policy? This is a box ticking exercise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a box ticking exercise. My own they're, not, you're not, they're basically not covered for anything because they've got everything pre existing, but they have the paper to show they have it. And so they can get the visa. I just is say, that the way it's working? Well, there's, you know, people will have different pre-existing conditions. Yeah. So if, if they've got, if somebody comes to us, so you know, for myself, I've been underwritten. I suffer from gout. So when I took out the policy, it says very clearly on my policy, you're, you're, you're not covered for anything related to gout, but you're covered for everything else. Mm -hmm. So you know, because we fully underwrite, we look at every person on a case by case basis. Now, if somebody's had something kind of very severe, let's say cardiac issues before, mm -hmm. um, diabetes, whatever. You know, our underwriters will look at you individually and they may say, well, actually, you know, you've got high blood pressure, you've got hypertension. We will load the premium slightly. We won't cover the maintenance of that particular condition, but we will cover the outcome of that particular condition, such as a heart attack or a stroke. That's not something you'll find with any of our competitors, right? But um, I don't think that the, the immigration offices are intricate enough to start looking at what is covered or what isn't. Correct. I, I believe that a, an immigration officer will look, one, the logo of the company, the name of the company, because that's on the, six, the list of six, right. to make sure that that's there, to make sure the minimum is, an amount is there that it either is the same as or exceeds those minimums provided. and. Uh, I don't believe for one moment they will consider deductibles. I don't believe they'll consider conditions or exclusions. I, I just cannot see it because they're an immigration officer. They're looking to make sure that certain things comply. That's right. And I think that's the approach they will take. So let me ask you a question based on what you just said about the, it meets the minimum standard. If that was the case, why couldn't you issue them these regular policies, these regular packages well, that you have that are more than that well, amount, the, why don't those comply? I don't understand because that. Because what we have to do is we have to issue a special certificate. So it's a government has designed the certificate for the OX visa, but we have not received yet the design of the OA visa certificate. So we issue an insurance certificate that will fill in certain blocks. But why but couldn't that it. certificate be issued yes. along with, say, like the maximum mm -hmm. policy that I have, and you just give the certificate along with the policy it, because it complies to the requirement? Possibly. But right now we don't know. Is that like a... Is that too complicated well, to, for the for somebody who's <laughs> making these executive decisions within immigrate well, yeah. or within the health department? I mean, to me, that's a slam dunk. It makes total sense. Oh, just, Why not have more coverage, better coverage? Yes, I, I don't know. Just in answering that, JC, the plans that we have we issue, the name is a long stay, so the application form they fill out is a long stay application or an uh, OX. A so special they're, application. Yeah. Yes, they're specific. I'm at a loss, right, because I've spoken to literally thousands of people in the last six weeks, mm. and it, it doesn't make any sense to me yeah. that a guy with a policy with, you know, $100,000, $500,000, up to even a million dollar policy, he's on a non-OA visa, and at this juncture, he can't go to the immigration office with a million dollar policy and tick that box. Doesn't it has sense. to be these, one of these uh, six companies' plans that have been approved. As I said... But there is a possibility, by what you just said, that you be able to uh, present these policies that you have and get them approved at some point or some junction? Is that possible? That, that's exactly what we're in the process of. Yeah. I mean, what we've said is, you know, first of all, our belief is that 400,000 bahts worth of cover is, is inefficient. Uh, it doesn't really serve any real um, objective in, of insurance. And, you know, logic would dictate that eventually the government would say, well, if a plan that's covered in X amount is more than what we've mandated, then that should tick the box. It but should be a slam that's, dunk. that's not on us, you know. Yeah, we're, right, we're, so. we're, we're waiting and we're motioning for it. We, we've designed three other plans that we are submitting to them, but whether they will be approved, I don't know. Um, it's really... We just try to follow the regulation and try to understand. Do you have any what idea these, what the approval process is? I mean, what is the, the determination of whether a policy is going to pass their uh, approval or not? 
I mean, because my policy that I have that I pay for, again, more than exceeds the requirement. On what basis would they not approve that? I mean, that would be the question. Again, uh, we don't know. Yeah. You know it's <laughs> I mean, you see, it's uh, for this new, um, these new requirements. It's a new policy that has to be signed off and approved. It is a new premium structure that has to be signed off and approved, just like we do before, but it's another process we have to go through. Mm. So each version has to be signed off by the regulator, which is very good because then people know the plan is an approved plan, right. but it takes time. What I understand is that people won't have to show it here only in their home country when they initially apply for the OA or yeah. OAX. That's the way I understand. OX, though, you have to continue to have the, the, the insurance, but here they... The gentleman that came in uh, that had a renewal for July was told by immigration yeah, he had yeah. to have the policy. So again, you know, there's mixed messages going on everywhere. Right, exactly. We can only, Which you know, is common here. Huh? Right. So, you know, again, the hope is that one, plans that have got real coverage would tick that, tick that box. Our understanding has changed on a day-to-day -day basis over the, on the last it, five weeks. I mean, we just like some clarity as to yeah. what, because it's very difficult to keep guessing. Yeah, it's difficult very, for you, it's difficult very, for the people, the applicants, everybody, it's difficult for everybody at this point right. because of lack of clarification. Yes. I mean, it would be much easier for us, for them to say, as Jamie had said, if someone's insured and if they're going to limit it to the six companies, a policy issued by them with this minimum applies. It makes total sense and to that. me. Well, I, I, I appreciate you all sitting down and, and having this conversation. And I know you did come up when I asked you on the phone and told you I would come by and talk about a couple of things. If there's anything else that you wanted to mention before we close this, go ahead and, and, and mention it. I'd, I'd like to say this, you know, uh, you know I'm not going to sit here and, you know, try and sell Pacific Cross. I, I'd ask people to do their own research, look at the different plans that are on the market, whether it's for the long stay visa or whether it's for you know, a real insurance policy, we're, we're here to speak to people. So, you know, I'd like to say that, is there's not many companies that, that are out there that you can actually call up and get some advice. I try to provide the best, you know, advice possible. Um, I'm not here to sell plans just for the selling plans sake, you know, so which is why actually the vast majority of people that I've spoken to in the last month, I've said, you know, if your renewal's up in December, I don't want to sell you this policy now because yeah. it's not a real insurance policy. And it could change between yeah, and, now and, and then exactly. as well. Um, well and I, also I want to mention here too, because of the overwhelming amount of people contacting you, I would like to also mention to people maybe have a little more patience than normal for you to get back in touch because you are, you are, are in overwhelm at this point. At one stage, uh, the lookups on our Facebook, sorry, on our website, uh, increased from its daily 250 to 300 by 500%. 500 percent. 500 percent more. And it caused us a lot of great problems. Mm. Yeah, sure. What, JC, what I would like to let people think about, who are looking at insurance in Thailand, because you're moving into an older age group consider taking an annual deductible on a policy. That way you lower the premium even if you start trying to save the deductible. But my belief is that you can borrow a deductible from a friend or a family member but you can't borrow the amount of the premium. That's like true. a five million, you can't get that. No. So may, in your home country you may not uh, understand deductibles you may not be used to deductibles, uh, but you have to give it some thought. It's a deductible is self-insurance. Oh, I have I have a, a thousand, uh, the equivalent of a thousand U.S. dollar deductible. I, mean, I want to say it's what forty thousand, know, something like that. And I mean, it substantially reduced the premium cost for me, and and was well worth. It. And of course, you all now have discounted. I've had it a couple of years now, mm -hmm. and you all have discounted also because I haven't filed any claims. So there is ways to to lower the premiums. Right. I'm just hoping that they'll be able to take the, the my hope is, is that maybe people are going to be able to get the kind of coverage I have and also be able to use that to comply yeah, to this requirement. On, on Tom's note, I think it's important to say as well, you know, there is a lot of people in this country that don't have any insurance. And they said, you know, some of them have got their self-insuring, they've got money in the bank and that's great. There's also a segment that's saying, you know, I'm an Englishman, right? 
of the amount of English people that I've spoke to that said, well, if I'm sick, I'll just fly home. People don't remember, you have to be medically fit to fly. If you've got, if you've got anything serious and that doctor can't let you on that plane, what happens then? So at the very minimum, everybody should have some kind of insurance policy sat behind them. And if, and if, it's, uh, if it's about premium, there's ways that we can lower the premium to make mm. it affordable. And with the product suite we've got, you know, it's, it's not, we've got low, mid and high end insurance. You're but, probably a good person to ask too as well, when, as far as being able to fly back, don't they have to return back into their home country, into England? for a certain amount of times before they get back in the Q4 help? Well, that's very true. With the NHS, you know, people, uh, I don't quote me on this, but my understanding is once you've left the country for three months, you're no longer eligible for treatment in the, in, under the NHS. That said, you know, the, the hospitals in England won't turn you away. They'll treat you first and yeah, do I think you do have to reestablish yourself there for a specific mm -hmm. amount of time, if I'm not mistaken, and don't hold me to that sure. either. But, Tracy, yeah. what, what I'd like people to remember is that while the doctor can say you're medically fit to fly, mm. the chief purser on the aeroplane decides whether he's going to let you on or not. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've had instances where people have had a stroke, they want to go home to the UK, two people want to go home. However, they were incontinent. And yeah. as a result of yeah. that, the purser would not accept them on an aeroplane. Yeah. Now those people stayed in Thailand as it was for an excess of three months and one of them had to stay in the hospital and I can tell you the the expense in fact both of them stayed in the hospital but one one of them uh, the expense was uh, just over seven million baht. so and if even if they had enough coverage to stabilize themselves to be able to get back but again it's going to be up to the discretion of the purse cheap purse or the plane whether right. they're going to let them on or not but just even if they said, well, you can't fly as you are, but, you know, we can stabilize you, we need to, and then you can go home if you want to stay there and get coverage, but at least they got to have coverage to get to that point, just, right? Just understand, if, if, you, if you don't have coverage and you're not in a position to get home, be prepared that either you're going to, you know, fall by the wayside or you're going to go into a hospital and, let you know, going to the doctor's, for the flu, yes, Thailand's quite cheap in that respect. Mm. Make no mistake, if you go to a private hospital and you're admitted over a length of time, that you know the, the bills can get out of hand. And it could be you've seen Tom's seen people that told him they'd get a policy and they didn't. They've ended up having to you know sell a house or yeah. you know, it's it's it's. And it we've can got get vloggers now. One vlogger in particular that said, "Oh, I'll get health insurance coverage next year," and he was diagnosed with cancer one year before he was going to pick up coverage and now he's faced with these bills and so I mean all these are issues that need to be considered when people are, are thinking about insurance and rightfully so because now for me I have a, a thousand about a thousand dollar deductible I'm married to a Thai person I'm completely happy if it's a minor situation I fall off the motorbike or something and I'm not you know in serious injury of going to a public hospital where it's very inexpensive and I pay out of my pocket I have you all's coverage for either an issue that I need diagnosed properly, which I would feel more comfortable in a private hospital doing with their expertise, as opposed to a public hospital, or if I do have a serious illness and I need serious treatment, then I need to opt into the private hospital, and that's when you all's coverage is going to be a lifesaver, literally, literally. <laughs> pun intended. You know. But well, the funny thing is, JC, you know, your plan covers you up to 10 million baht, mm -hmm. and that's not an aggregate total. That's 10 million baht per condition per year. Per year. You're very well protected. Mm -hmm. Now, some people don't have the the you know the capacity to get a plan that covers them up to that much. There is people over here that are retiring cheap. So they might have a plan that will cover them up to one million or three or five million baht. Then you have to be very particular about which places you're using for treatment. So for example, if you've got a plan that covers you up to one million baht and you did get cancer, yes, we will all, here's another point, because we've fully underwritten, we will pay every single claim that's valid. You know, whatever, whatever people would like to say online, as long as, you've not declared, as long as you've declared everything correctly and been truthful on your application, we will honour every single claim that comes out. Furthermore, we won't kick you off at a certain age or we'll renew you through, through the lifetime. But if you are on, on a plan that's got a lower level coverage, you know, be careful about which hospitals you're going to. You know, Tom's seen cases before where people have gone in with cancer, they've gone straight to Bumangrad. It's one of 
it's a great, great hospital, but it's one of the more expensive ones. Absolutely. So we're also here to assist. You'll, you'll burn through the coverage Very a lot quickly. quicker. That's a good point. But we're here to help. I never even thought of that. Right. So, you know, we're here to advise people. So, you know, if somebody's gone into this hospital, Tom's done how many cases where he's called the client and said, I'd advise you to get out of that bed you if you're mobile. You're going through your coverage in no time. Go down to a, another treatment provider. Because, and I never thought about that because, I mean, my coverage, you've, You're fine. In, in my handbook, I mean, I can go to basically any Anyone. name hospital here and have my coverage accepted. And so, but I never thought about as you increase the standard of the hospital or if they are a medical tourist hospital, which are known for being higher costs, those costs are going to burn through your coverage a lot quicker. That's a very valid point. And can I just tie, tie that back into the deductible thing that Tom said, is that, you know, although we've got this big, you know, range of products, you'd be so much more better off uh, to get a higher level plan that gives you that peace of mind and do the necessary steps to bring the premium down, whether it's a mm. higher deductible, mm. whether it's the outpatient removal. You know, I can sell a premier plan that costs X, right? But I can also sell a Maxima or a Maxima Plus plan, do some mechanisms to bring down the premium that would and have been the same, the same exactly. Premium cost. So, uh, you, know, if, you know, this is always comes down to budget. People mm -hmm. usually here are buying on budget. Come to us, speak to us, tell us your requirements, tell us your budget, explain to us your conditions. You know, but again, we, we try and be as transparent on our offer letters before anybody's made a decision or taken the policy out. Most other companies, very easy application, very easy to pay, but they know nothing about you. And it's only when you're sick that they will investigate the condition. Mm -hmm. And that is why when you think you're covered for something, and in mm -hmm. fact you're not because they didn't know you were on blood pressure, tablets or whatever, oh, the insurance company it, doesn't want to pay. They, then they don't, file, they don't pay the claim because it was pre-existing even though you didn't, they know it's pre-existing. Mm -hmm. You know, what people have to understand is that when you think you're going to die, you tell the doctor 110% of the truth. <laughs> when you discover that you're not dying, yeah. the truth is dilated, uh, diluted. Mm. So that's when an insurance company finds out. Because they get the medical records in, read it and say, ah, you've had this treatment before. Mm -hmm. And I say to people, be honest. Don't say, I forgot. I mean, most people know whether they've had a mini stroke They've, be, they've had an MRI in a hospital before, they've had a back problem, whatever, they know it. Tell the insurance company right at the start. Yeah, be honest up front. Because they, they don't want any unexpected surprises where all right. of a sudden they have a bill that they have to pay because you all find out that they had pre-existing conditions right. that they didn't disclose it to you all. It just wastes a whole lot of time for the insurance company having to check on it. It's easy to say, just pay the bill. Mm -hmm. But you pay the bill for genuine claims. You don't pay the bill for claims that uh, are not genuine. Yeah. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and close it. I just do want to uh, say thank you so much for taking okay. the time to sit thank down you. with me and answer these questions because <clears throat> my members are always, I'm fielding questions. And I don't, I'm not an insurance company. I have no knowledge like you all have. I do have knowledge about the visa end of it and all that. But when it comes to coverages and all this and, and what you're being told by the government and by these you know, regulate, regulating agencies, I didn't have a clue and I thought, okay, we need to make some clarifications here for the YouTube viewers and, and put all this out there. And if they have any other questions that they can contact you. But this is like, <clears throat> there seems to be people in, in the YouTube community that don't believe anything anybody says. <laughs> And they might not even believe you. I mean, these people are just, you know, it, it's, it's funny at this point. But the people that are serious and concerned about this issue, now they've got some real information. I think that's really valuable. So I want to thank you all. We're always a call or an email away, as I said. You know, the you. the underwriting is so important. Thank you so much. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's been informative. And if you have any other questions, I'm going to put a link in the description to where you can contact Jamie directly and uh, he'll field questions. Again, have a little patience. They are in ov overwhelm at this point. But hopefully, if, there, if and contact me too. If any clarification comes out or any changes, please let me know and I'll pass it on or we'll come back in and sit down again and if, and if there's a clear cut distinction that we need to know I about. think, because obviously, you're just on, on the last point, in the coming months, we'll also be taking on some uh, 
um, other professionals that can speak multiple languages, German, Italian, cool. French, Japanese. So we're there to help, you know, okay, and cool. we're there to be as, 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 a, as, as helpful as possible. Despite what these people will say online, we're not here to just sell a plan for the sake of it. We're trying to do the right thing for the right Good. reason. All right? Well, thanks again. And uh, even when it comes to complying with insurance regulations nowadays, there's always an option. And uh, again, they even mentioned, make sure to do your homework and find out what you're going to need to comply to. And then reach out into the different companies. Pacific Cross is one of the ones that have been approved. But reach out to them and see what, so what they offer and as far as the service. and. Uh, but I, I definitely say check out the Pacific Cross. I think it's one of the best companies out there. Thank you, and that's why I have insurance with you all. So thanks again for your time. Cheers. And uh, we'll be in touch. And there you go. Hope it's been helpful. And see ya. Hey, JC here. My goal is always to help you get from where you are now to where you want to be, which is probably a life in Thailand. And I know a lot of questions come up about all sorts of things regarding insurance and vehicles, transportation, housing, relationships, getting licenses, all that stuff. And I want to help you by answering as many questions as I can. And if I can't answer them, then I'll reach out to you personally. But I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you can click on that and be able to tell me what it is that you're interested in and what kind of information and I'll be able to try and answer it because I'm probably not going to be able to answer it within the YouTube comments anymore because of time constraints. It's just getting to be too much of a task to go through all the comments. So if you have a question, direct it to me. There'll be a link in the description and I'll be back in touch with you to try and get as much relevant information to you as I can. Remember, when it comes to getting the information you need about retiring in Thailand, there's always an option. See you, JC, out.